Welcome to the channel, everybody. You're here for another episode of Carpet Cleaning Guys Vlogs. Today's video, I'll be just featuring the basement area that we're cleaning. It's all uh, Berber white carpet. And I will be using my Orbot Vibe, as well as some Glad cotton pads. And we'll be mixing up the solution at one ounce per gallon with the Green Dragon. I've already cleaned the back half of this room. I'll try to pan in and out and show you where it wasn't really, really dirty, but you can clearly see the brighter side on the left and the darker side on the right. Yeah, I don't know if zooming helps any, but anyway, I'll show you the dirty pad from the first half and then we'll follow with finishing the rest of the room. It is a beautiful day out here in the state of Washington. We did all of the upstairs in this home as well as the stairs. I'll show you a little bit of the staircase coming down. It is a wool carpet on the staircase, but the Berber is just a regular synthetic. So bear with me there. The carpets come out beautiful. I've been maintaining these for this homeowner for about seven years now. I do use my Auric Orbiter on the stairs, as most of you know. Look at that pad. There's the one from the stairs. All right. And there's my new floor mat. I think I picked that up at Ace Hardware. And I think it was like $9 there. But boy, does it really take all the debris off the bottom of your shoe sole. And in the state of Washington, when it's rainy or overcast, there's always a little windy breeze. You get pine needles, you get uh, leaves, you get a uh, yard bark all over the main entrance to these homes. And it's easy to pick that up and not notice and go along if you're not putting your shoe booties on, which I've been doing lately. Uh, but with this mat, I found it was really good to get all the debris off and I had no problems there. I'll be pre-spraying everything with my works sprayer. You can see that thing works amazing. So enjoy the video and I think I'll talk a little bit about myself. <laughs> oh yeah. So a little bit about me. My father was in the Air Force and he met my mother overseas in England and I was born over in England um, in a town called South Ricelip. There was a military base there. I don't think it's there anymore and I grew up a little bit of my life in uh, Kent on a street called Rochester Road. Really really unique. I loved it there and then we got orders like military families do to the Philippines. And I grew up for, oh goodness, four or five years in the Philippines. And we were on or stationed at Clark Air Force Base, which they no longer have. And we, oh goodness, my sister and I, when I say we, I just had one other sibling. She was a couple years older than me, but when you're in the military, your siblings become your best friends. And we ended up loving the Philippines. Oh my gosh, we would visit the sugarcane fields, go down to the mar marketplace with my father and uh, buy all kinds of um, vegetables and fruits. And of course the mangoes, oh my gosh, the mangoes there were to die for. Oh my gosh. So I, <laughs> the hardest part was getting that peel off fast enough. <laughs> And then um, some of the other foods in the Philippines, which we enjoyed is if you've ever been to the Philippines, they have lumpia and oh my goodness, I'm telling you, the lumpia in the Philippines was just unbelievable. And then we, there was a, <clears throat> not a candy, but it was like a fruit candy almost. I'm trying to think of the name. If you're from the Philippines, it looks like a date with a hard pit but it's, oh, I think it's called Sampalak, Sampalak. 
their little, um, like I said, almost like a date. And, oh my gosh, they're so good. <clears throat> they're similar to, I think, um, the in Mexico they have a small, um, gosh, they put chili powder on it and sugar. Can't think of the name. But anyway, um, oh man, reminiscing about the Philippines is awesome. I really enjoyed it. We had um, friends that lived in Nipa huts out in the fields and I would visit and I could ride the caribou and they in and out of the main areas of Philippines we would take what's called a jeepney that was basically a jeep that was kind of just with a roof open open side panels and back and you would hop in the jeepney and that was kind of like their taxi cabs so that was just incredible really loved it and then we got orders again oh one last thing they do get typhoons and I do remember being we were on the military base and a typhoon came through and my family was underneath the dining room table and there was a window just off to the distance in the home and I could see my neighbor across the street my friend Jeffrey his house and boy, there was so much turbulence with the typhoon. We watched the roof of his house completely separate and fly away. <laughs> I kid you not. Unbelievable memories of that. Oh, goodness. So I will get back to the Philippines some point in time in my life. And I did visit England because my grandparents were there. We used to go back every year. The military gives families free flights I think is the way it works so we used to visit quite frequently that was enjoyable and my fondest memory of England is of course um, Cadbury's the chocolate manufacturer would make what's called a flake if you've ever had a Cadbury's flake oh you know what I'm talking about it looks like a small cigar log made of finely crumbled Cadbury's chocolate oh wonderful and Cadbury's the wonderful thing about Cadbury's was unlike Hershey's where we use that carnauba wax which is an actual wax Cadbury's uses real milk chocolate and no fillers oh at least they did back then <laughs> so anyway this video is coming to a close I'll probably talk about myself more often in a few more videos so you can get to know me a little bit better in my background there's the beautiful results. I hope everyone has a fantastic day. I'll see you in my next episode.